my name is Dave Helgeson. I'm a lifetime RVer, and my wife and I are very active boondockers. Many people want to know more about boondocking, so I'm here to teach you how. We'll complete a whole series on the what, where's, and when's of boondocking and what it's all about so you can learn it and do it yourself. So let's get started. So what is boondocking and why would someone want to go boondocking? Let's take a look. It means different things to different people. Searching the internet, you'll find many definitions of boondocking from dry camping in a developed campground to staying overnight in a rest area or camping anywhere without electricity, water, or sewer regardless of location. So by that definition, camping in a forest service campground would be boondocking because there's typically no hookups. If you belong to an RV club, you'll probably go to a rally very suddenly you get a hookup at a rally site. So that could be boondocking by some people's definition. Rest areas. Many rest areas across the U.S. you can stay overnight. Uh, again, there's no hookups. You're out there on the asphalt. Some people say that is boondocking. Parking downtown in a city area where it's legal to do so. Uh, you can see some RVs parked here along the curbs. Obviously you're out there in the concrete jungle. Uh, not something I prefer to do, but some people consider that boondocking. Flying J and other retail establishments like Cabela's uh, will allow you to stay overnight in their parking lots with your RV for free. Uh, some people say, yeah, I was boondocking at Cabela's last night. You know, if that's your definition, knock yourself out. But what do the experts have to say about boondocking? Looking at the root word, expert in the field, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, they've been at it for over 100 years publishing dictionaries. Boondocks, they say it's the rough country filled with dense brush, a rural area, or the sticks. Dictionary.com says it's an uninhabited area with thick natural vegetation, a remote rural area. Talks about the origin of boondocks. Uh, actually, the Marines bought it back from World War II when they were stationed over the Philippines. They picked it up from the locals over there about being out in the sticks. You can see the synonyms here. It's backcountry, backwoods, boonies, the sticks. One more, the free dictionary says the boondocks is a wild, dense brush area, rural country, the backwoods. A remote rural area. So you're starting to get a picture here that the boondocks is not involved asphalt, buildings, uh, other man-made structures or population. So then by definition boondocking is dry camping on remote rural public land with few or no developed amenities for free. So not boondocking, camping at Walmart. Many people say I camped at Walmart last night. I was boondocking. It's like knock yourself out. There are books published about that. You can buy them online. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to teach you how to find spots like this and how to find them ahead of time and how to camp on them and what the rules are going to be through a series of installments here. So, why do people want to boondock? Let's take a look. For some, it's necessity. Uh, they only have so many dollars to spend on their camping vacations. Uh, people on fixed income and the like, they just have a set budget, X number of dollars to spend. So let's look at an example. If you're a typical camper, you're going to stay at a campground every night. You know, nowadays you can average about $30 per night between private and public campgrounds. Probably realistically more. If you got $600 to spend, you're going to spend $30 a night, 20 nights and you're done. You haven't even bought fuel for your gas tank. It limits you, without a doubt. If you're a boondocker, you got that same $600 budget, you're staying free every night to camp. That leaves the full $600 for your fuel tank. Now, I don't know what your economy is on your RV, but for me, it's going to get me somewhere around 15 to 2,000 miles of RVing at the current fuel prices. The only thing that limits me to coming back then is obligations at home. I could stay out indefinitely in the boondocks on that 600 bucks because groceries you're going to buy at home or on the road regardless. Uh, so that's a non-factor. So boondocking can be very economical for somebody on a fixed income. Location uh, plays into my wife and I's travels very much. We like to explore ghost towns, old mining camps, uh, other forgotten remote places, and by definition, a ghost town doesn't have a KOA next door, at least not a true one. In Virginia City and some tourist ones, yes. The true old spots in the West that are forgotten, campgrounds quite a ways away on most situations. Another situation for location, uh, my wife and I also like to explore uh, slot canyons, do canyoneering, uh, a lot of other remote, unique geographical locations um, across the West. Again, they're typically not a developed campground nearby. Uh, this is a spot down in Utah. There's a, a canyon that runs right back here we explored. Uh, needed two or three days there, so it's something we had to find a campground to explore all the canyons in the area we wanted to check out. Hence a boondocking location. And you have to agree, it's pretty scenic too. 
Location, uh, we also enjoy off-roading. You'll see a motorcycle here and an ATV. Uh, typically, you cannot ride from a developed campground by state or county laws. The vehicles aren't correctly licensed or aren't allowed on those paved roads. Uh, so if we want to ride from camp, we need to find a spot where we can camp at the trailhead we want to ride. In this particular case, we rode up this canyon here down in Utah. This provided a very convenient boondocking spot for us to ride from. We could ride, enjoy our afternoon, come back, and we had camp already set at the end of the day. Some people, it's choice. Uh, quiet. There's lack of man-made sounds. You're out there all by yourself. You're not worrying about your neighbor in a campground firing up his diesel at 5.30 in the morning to hit the long day on the road. You know, the garbage truck's not coming in, pick up the dumpster in the morning. You're not dealing with any of that in the boondocks. View. Lack of man-made things. You're not looking at your neighbor's slide out. You're not looking at power lines, not looking at bathrooms in the, the campground, fence, traffic, freeways, none of that. It's all out there. It's all natural. Solitude. You know, I like to say it's as close as you can get to God's best creation without um, going there. Stargazing. If you're into um, watching the stars, this is a great way to do it out in the boondocks. You have no light pollution at night. Stars come out. You can sit out there and enjoy it. Okay, choice. Uh, one thing my wife and I found we really enjoy boondocking is in the morning, I wake up, I get my cup of tea ready to go, crank open the windows, and just wait for that sun to come up over the horizon. Uh, being in the boondocks, you don't have neighbors staring in at you. You don't have to worry about getting outside to see around the rig. It's there and ready to go. Uh, this particular spot we shot down in Utah. And you see, unobstructed view of the sunrise, no other RVs. We're out there by ourselves. Conversely, unspoiled sunsets. We, again, we like, like to typically cook, cook our fire, cook our dinner over fire outside. Uh, you know when sunset's coming, we'll typically sit out there and maybe cooking some burgers or some steaks, uh, move in at our dinette seat and watch the sunset. It's kind of like dinner in a movie, uh, all for free. Convenience. When boondocking, there's no need to make reservations, worry about check-in times, and no rushing around to break camp before the posted checkout time. You know, just, just to prove this point, I took a screenshot of Yellowstone this coming summer. It's still four months away. Two-week period, you can see it's already sold out. Uh, not very conducive to having a life, free lifestyle of RVing when you can't get reservations where you want to go. Um, so with boondocking, there's none of that. You know where you're going. You've found the spots ahead of time. You can check in when you want. You can check out when you want. Uh, my wife and I, again, we set an itinerary of the things we want to do. We typically guess how many days we might need at a spot. We might do one spot. We thought, hey, we're going to need to do it for three days and find out, hey, these things weren't as good as we thought. We can leave in a day. Conversely, we get another spot. We thought, well, we only need a day there. We find out we might need three days there. There's nothing holding us back. We don't have to break camp to get to the reservations in that campground, or we're already booked in for several days where we're at. Total freedom. That's what RVing is really all about. Convenience. Many RV owners travel with a pet. Um, Typically, in the boondocks, you don't need to leash your pet or worry about them wanting to traffic. You can just let them go around the campsite. Cold, windy morning, and the dog wants out. Nothing better than staying in bed and open the door and let him go instead of getting, your, you're getting up and getting dressed, getting your coat on, getting the leash, putting the boots on, and doing the whole dog walking thing. Our dog, we just open the door. He'd go take care of his business. He'd come back. You'd hear his, his claws on the step. We'd open the door and let him back in. Convenience. When you just need a spot to pull off the road for the night, and don't need or have the opportunity to use the amenities of a full-service campground, boondocking is a quick and inexpensive alternative. This particular spot is um, in eastern Oregon off Highway 97 between Bend and Madras, Oregon. We've used it multiple times. Uh, Highway 97 just runs right over here. This is about a mile, mile and a half uh, off the main highway, literally a, maybe 100 yards of gravel to get there. Uh, unlike a campground, we don't have to check in. We don't have to back into a space and unhook, so we're not blocking the, the road to the camp. Uh, very, very convenient. Next morning, we raise our jacks and go on to our next site. Uh, we could also go on to Band. There's a K, K, uh, Kmart. There's a Walmart down there we can stay at for free. But I think you would agree, would you rather have that instead of a bunch of cars going by you? Just because. And you know, when you want to go, if you're a boondocker, when you just want to go camping, you can pick up stakes and typically go. This particular frame, frame I like to use because this was shot last summer. Here in the Northwest, we had a heat wave. Most RVers or most homeowners in the Northwest do not have air conditioning in their home. My wife and I are sitting there sweltering. We can work from the internet and via phone. So I said, what are we doing sitting here? Let's grab the RV, let's go up to the pass, 
camp on the lake, it'll be much cooler, we'll have a better view, we'll sleep better at night, we can continue to work. Um, coming and going from home costs about you know, 11, 12 gallons of fuel. I think we spent three days up there until the heat broke down below. Very convenient and spur of the moment. No reservations needed, we picked up and went. Convenience, you can take friends with you. Uh, there's no limit to the number of RVs or people you can have in one camp spot. This particular shot was, was I took last um, summer. We had some friends go camping with us into western Montana. We did a lot of ghost town exploring. Uh, prime season, it was August. A lot of the campgrounds were full. In fact, I read a report that the, the state parks had 10% increase in reservations last summer, that they had to turn some people away. We spent 22 nights on the road without one reservation. And if you were to come, the first come, first serve campground with two RVs in prime season, I can guarantee you, you're never going to get two sites next to each other. In the boondocks, we had two sites next to each other every night of our trip. Uh, pretty convenient. Really comes a state of mind. You know, my wife and I started this out of necessity. Uh, now that we've done it for about 10 years, it's our preferred way to camp. Uh, we just assume be in the boondocks and be in a campground. I mean, where are you going to get that in a campground? You're out there, beautiful view, uh, you know, Stay one night, stay five nights, your total freedom coming and going when you want. So you could be here in the boonies. Uh, many people want to be, but they just don't know how to do it. But, so what's stopping you? Is it not knowing how to get there? Um, and what are the rules? I'm going to teach you all that in the series coming up of where you can camp, what the rules are, how long you can stay there, how to extend your stay time via water capacity, batteries, holding tanks. So in our next installment, we're going to talk where you can boondock uh, on public land. So this concludes the what boondocking and the why our viewers will want to boondock. And again, in the next installment, we're going to talk about where you can boondock. Thanks for watching.